Be resolved that the agenda for the March 21st, 2023 meeting be accepted as presented. I right, please move that. All in seconder, Councilman Gregor. All in favor? Be resolved that the special meeting council be recessed to allow council to hold a public hearing to receive representations from any person who wish to make them in respect to the 2023 financial plan. Please move that. Councilor Fisher, seconder. Councilor Jones. All in favor? So we want to start with. Um, you may as well start with the presentation. Did it turn on and move on a little bit? Everybody should have a hot coffee if you want to follow along, but it'll be on the screen. We'll start out by uh, welcoming everybody for coming. Thank you for your attendance and uh, for participating today. And we'll start out with an uh, introduction of uh, council and staff. Um, I, I know I don't have a loud voice. I'll try and project. <laughs> uh, Councillors representing Ward 2, the North Ward, we have uh, Craig Hatch and Conrad Fury. Representing the South Ward or Ward 3, we have Mike Fisher and Frank Jones. Uh, Ward 1, which is Wallanisa, Bob McDonald and Brett McGregor. And our Head of Council, Dave Krekowicz. For staff in attendance, we have Joni Swinicki, our CAO. I'm the finance officer, Elaine McGregor, and we have two administrators, Cheryl Fraser over here and Norma Will over there. So just uh, briefly to go over the agenda, we're going to talk about the purpose of the public hearing, a little bit of information about assessment, tax levies and special service levies, a uh, review of the 2023 budget, no rates and for parcel levies, what you get for your tax dollars, and we'll round out with next steps. So the purpose of having a public hearing is to inform ratepayers, the public about the financial situation and our plans for the municipality to assist the public to understand how their tax dollars are being spent, provides an opportunity for public participation and input, provides an understanding of the relationship between the services that the municipality provides and the taxes and the difficult decisions that must be made by council to determine a balance between the two. The public hearing provides a general overview of the 2023 financial situation. We thought um, this year being an assessment year, we, we talk a little bit about uh, assessment and how it works and what it's all about and how it relates to your uh, tax bill. So assessed values of all properties are determined by the provincial assessment branch and we pay them $38,000 annually for this service. Property assessment is the assessor's best estimate of the most probable selling price for a property. Total municipal portion assessment, which is different than the current assessment, for 2022 was 181,201,840. 2023 went up a little bit to 183,747,620. For 2023, the assessed values, which is what your tax bills are going to be based on, for all properties will be updated as of April 1st, 2021 market values. The last time we did, the last time the provincial assessment branch did an assessment, it was based on April 1st, 2018 market values. 
property assessments were last updated in 2020. Changes in the total portion of assessment from 2022 to 2023 were about 1.405%. And the changes are due, come on in. <laughs> Changes are due to reassessments to new development in the municipality and assessment removed from tax rolls, for example, uh, if a building is removed or demolished. That 1.4% is the total percentage increase for the whole municipality. Of course, individual properties will vary. On average, farm properties went up about 5%. The residential properties went down on average about 6%. Then different classifications, pipeline, railway, they're all a little different, but the 1.405 was the overall average for the municipality. So how does that relate to your taxes? Individual property tax levy is calculated by taking the assessed value times a portioned percentage. For farmland, that percentage is 26%. For residential, it's 45. For commercial, institutional, other, it's 65. So you take your portioned assessment amount and times by the mill rate. <laughs> mill rate taxes are about 81% of the total municipal tax bill. And the mill rate levy and the special service levies are set by the budget requirements of the municipality. So just a, a bit of a, a chart to show you the assessment percentages by property class. You take a look at this. Now this is the current total assessment. Farm properties make up about 52% of the total assessment. Residential 30, pipeline 13, and the, the other smaller categories make up the rest. So those are the three main assessment categories. The next slide shows you the difference looking at the portion of assessment. So this is when you multiply by those percentages that I just explained. So when you look at portion assessment, Farmland makes up about 36%, residentials 36%, and the, the, the other classifications make up the 28%. So that's of the 28% of the taxes raised by the general at large mill rate. So to kind of explain that a little bit, if you have a residential property assessed at 500,000, multiply it by the 0.45, you get a portion of assessment of 225,000. To have a portion of assessment in the farm property, you would have a property that has a value of 865,385 times the 0.26 gives you the 225. That's why these pieces of the pie change from the current to the portion. Are you with me? <laughs> So just uh, overall of the budget, the 20, 2023 budget, 2 million 696, sorry, 2,964,779.51, which includes capital projects that are funded primarily from the reserves. This amount is an increase of 4.4% or 90,000. This is made up of several factors and we'll be going over them in the following pages. And just to note that the school tax portion of the financial plan is not included in the presentation. So the first category is general government services, which includes legislative, general administrative, made up of staff, office, legal, other general government, election, conventions, insurance, 
intergovernmental relations. So this, the budget for this category is 591,000. That's an increase of just over 24,000 from last year. Most of the increase is related to increases in insurance and computer and software costs. We had to, we budgeted to replace a laptop, a couple monitors, uh, licensing for the software programs is going up and also um, increased security to factor authentication. Uh, insurance, we have increased costs. We have um, additional costs for uh, cyber security and just overall general costs are increasing and going through the roof. Next category is protective services. This includes police, fire, emergency measures, other protection. The budget is a, just over 166,000, an increase of 44,772, made up in part by 10,675 for the startup costs and the training for the EMR, the Emergency Medical Responder Program, and also increased paramedic costs. Uh, 20,000 of that increase is for bunker gear an increase of 7,600 in insurance costs, which is um, we have some new equipment and also uh, increases in MPI costs. Uh, also part of protective services is an increase of 2,300 for pest control, that's bylaw maintenance, animal, uh, animal dog and cat control, and an increase of $500 to the fuel budget. Transportation services includes roads and streets, staff equipment repairs, maintenance, road construction, maintenance, gravel crushing, sidewalks, ditches. The budget for this category is just over 745,000, which is a decrease of 171,000 from last year. Some of the highlights of the changes from last year is an increase of 45,000 in staff costs, which includes 18,000 in seasonal staff wages so that we can do more mowing. Uh, an increase in the fuel budget of 49,500 from 67,500 to 117, just to be more in line with actual costs. An increase of 15,000 in shop and yard costs to account for the costs associated with the new shop in Wallanisa. Uh, some of these are one-time costs, um, like fixing the door, uh, replacing the heater. About 4,000 of that is what we estimate the annual utility budget to be. Uh, also part of the transportation change is a reduction in gravel crush crushing of 23,000, a reduction of 31,000, that we had to pay contractors last year for snow removal when our equipment was out being repaired. A reduction in grader maintenance of 20,000. Now that we have a new grader, hopefully the repair costs will be a lot less. And a reduction of over 200,000 for projects that will be covered through gas tax instead of mill. Environmental health services includes garbage and waste collection. Uh, the budget for this is just over 134,000, an increase of 5,425. Of this, 1,900 is re in relation to the agreement terms and in keeping with the special services levy. Also part of that 5,400 is 2,500 for waste transfer station improvements. public health and welfare. There was no change in this uh, area for uh, from last year. It includes cemeteries, handy transit, senior independent services, and also includes the budget amount is 26,100, includes $15,000 grant for the handy van. Environmental development services includes planning and zoning and community development. The budget is 6,000. This is an increase, a net increase of 1,700 due to an increase of 2,000 for expected 
costs for the restoration of survey monuments. That's something that we have no control over. They just tell us it needs to be done. And $300 reduction in contract services. Economic development services include destruction of pests, weed control, veterinary services, water resources, conservation, tourism, staff appreciation. The budget is just over 52,000, which is an increase of just, just over 15,000. That increase is made up of a boost of 14,000 to the rural weed control budget. An, addition, an additional $1,000 budgeted for the destruction of pests to help with the beaver problem, problems more than one. Recreation and culture includes community centers, halls, pools, rinks, playgrounds. The budget is 111,000, an increase of just over 2,000 or 1.86% and is keeping in keeping with the support, recreation support special services levy. Fiscal services includes transfer to capital and utility. The budget is just over 581,000, which is a decrease of just over a million from last year. And the decrease can be explained by a reduction in transfer to capital public works, a reduction in transfer to capital buildings, and a reduction to transfer to capital in fire. The 2023 budget includes capital projects in the amount of 361,546, being funded primarily by reserves. The, it also makes the, the Lagoon project is part of that. That's 110,591 and 109,000 in debenture funding for RF now and the ice plant. Also part of physical services is we have budgeted 150,000 for anticipated 2022 deficit recovery. That is due partly to increased costs. And the big part of that is not being able to use gas tax funds for the office building. We had budgeted the office building to be paid for through money from the general reserve, from the building reserve and from gas tax found out afterwards that we were unable to use the gas tax funds. So we had to put the gas tax money back into the gas tax reserve, causing a deficit. But we are going to be offsetting that by, if you remember a few slides back where I said the transportation costs were decreased by a little over 200,000. That's for using the gas tax. So we're offsetting the deficit in what for the office using it for transportation costs. In other words, there's not going to be any extra levies, any extra charges as a result of that. But uh, carrying on revenues includes other revenues, which is taxes added, penalties, licenses, permits sale of services, operating grants. The budget is just over 782,000, which is a, a decrease of 1,336,000. Last year, we budgeted to tran transfer 1,436,000 from reserves for the purchase of a new grader loader. Is somebody there? One in. This year we budgeted to transfer 250,000 from the gas tax reserves for rural road projects, paving and a culvert reset, and 93,000 from other reserves for fire gear, a mower and a snow blade. <laughs> Capital projects, capital projects or purchases planned for 2023 include the 
the tandem truck and installment payment on the Wawanisa shop, which is Perry Klein's building, a new mower, a snow blade for the loader, paving in Wawanisa, a rural road, rural road projects, and breathing apparatus for the fire department. The budget is just over 361,000 funded primarily for reserves, from reserves. The utility budget, which makes part of our financial plan is wholly fund, entirely funded by the utility. The budget is 332,000, an increase of just over 15,000 from last year. The budget includes an increase in utility rates as set out in pub, or Public Utility Board Order Number 101-22. This is the first increase in utility rates since 2012. The budget includes two valve replacements at $5,000 each and the development of a proposal for water lines. Meal rates for 2023 with 2022 comparisons in brackets. The mill rate for 2023, 9.860 compared to 9.518 last year. We had a mill rate for recreation against farmland and a mill rate for recreation against class uh, all other classes. We don't know what that rate is going to be right now because there's a pro there was a problem with the software with the program at the provincial level that they're trying to work out it will be very close to last year it, last year was 0.266 this year it'll be 0.2 something and the other for the farm and the 0.426 last year it'll still be 0.4 something uh, other mill rates, 1.338 is the mill against Wawanisa properties for the lagoon. 1.121 is the mill rate against Wawanisa properties for the ice plant compared to 1.130. Special service levies per parcel charges. Again, there's not going to be any new special service levies this year. This is the 2023 per parcel charges are as follows. $50 per parcel for recreation for Wawanisa properties that are residential with no dwelling unit. That's the same as last year. 135, 135 per parcel for recreation for all other Wawanisa pro properties. Again, no change from last year. $25 per parcel for waste recycling for all residential properties of no dwelling units. Same as last year, $15.50 per parcel for waste recycling for ag lands compared to $15.59 .5, last year, $95.96 per parcel for waste and recycling for other, all other properties, which was $94.42 last year. Lagoon levy of $252.25 per parcel for Wawanisa, same as last year. $130.57 per parcel for the rural fiber optics. That's the RF now levy. And that 2023 is the last year for that levy. $59.91 per parcel for the rural ice plant, which is the same as last year. So that, that's what we're, the dollars. What do you get for your tax dollars? Just some of the ideas that we came for. I won't leave through all of them, but just mention some road maintenance and improvements, fire and protective services, community call, community halls, a rink, veterinary services, 911, weed control, waste transfer station, hospital grants, bursaries to the schools, animal control, by law enforcement. And where do we go from here? Next steps, we conclude the public hearing today. We adopt the financial plan and give first reading to the tax levy bylaw. We get the information uploaded to the province and then that triggers the printing of the tax bills. We mail the tax bills, payment due October 31st. 
And just a reminder that payment options include online payments, post-dated checks, and cash. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Elaine. Okay, now we'll turn it over to you. Do you have a question? Yes. Okay, it's your turn here. You came to this public hearing. So the public hearing is dealt for the adult serve for the public. If you have a representation you'd like to make, we welcome you to make it now. If you want to make it, you stand where you are. Uh, please name, use your name, your address, and or land number, and uh, proceed accordingly. So, go ahead. Yes. My name is Patricia Waterton, and I'm just here representing myself and my husband. I just have a question regards to the gas tax fund money. I know that it's been letting out and it's balancing out. But we got into a predicament for a reason. Is there now checks and balances in place to know that when you draw from something that is a fund, that we know exactly what the criteria is? You have a way of monitoring that now so we don't end up in this trouble again. Yes. And what is, how is it that you're going to do We're with, with municipal relations on that or directly on every situation we want to pull a gas tax for. There's a request made so that we have to get permission from the provincial and federal governments, and that's granted before we do the project. So that'll be now monitored so we don't end up with that situation again. Yes. Thank you. Just, to, just how do we determine the portion percentages? Are they regulated or is it something you mean? 26% to 45%, the 65% commercial. Provincial government. Is that commercial regulation? Yeah. Yeah, so those are not our rates. Those are the same no matter where you live in the province of Manitoba. For years, it's been uh, kind of discussed that we'd like to see the provincial government reduce the farm percentage. Yes. Um, that has not happened, and that's why we took it up to, to do our professional levy so we can reduce the cost of the farm properties. So we have more no control over that. Thank you. Nothing further? Um, actually, I have a question. Um, Giselle Corrigal, uh, Northwest 22819 West. Um, this has to do with the utility operating fund. Yes. Um, the net operating surplus slash deficit, so the deficit last year, was 61994 How is that being recovered? We don't, we don't have, we have to show a deficit before we can ever ask for uh, increases through pub. So we will recover it this year through our special rates. Our rates are increased this year, so that should recover that much of cost. Okay. So the sixty thousand the transfer to you utility reserve is so, sixty thousand dollars. Where's that coming? Yeah. Can I just add to that? Yeah. This is just the unaudited costs. Okay. Once the auditors do their magic, there is grant money that the way they do uh, a transfer of the, the grants when we talk to um, pub or to Dale Lyle he said that will zero out you won't have to report a deficit once, once, once all the audited adjustments are made okay. yeah. so another question kind of on the same same page um, you'll notice that the purification and treatment last year was budgeted 26,000, actually spent 29,000, and this year it's only 15,000. Like, do you really budget less than what you spent last year, even you only spent on your budget? Like, what's going on with that? And this has happened in a few places, I noticed this on here. Whereas what was actually spent and what's budgeted for this year, what's budgeted is less than what's being spent. Well, the rest that? of what's spent last year. Right? Yes. Right. For instance, fuel costs. We, we went I'm not talking fuel costs. I'm talking just directly here. No, fuel okay. cost is different. Everyone dealt with fuel costs. Right. Everyone right. dealt with So th huge this, this could be chemical that's been carried over. It could be a number of things that are there that have been carried over. <laughs> okay. 
But why are you budgeting but, less? So there was a very large water leak that persisted through all of last year. We were losing about 30,000 gallons per day. So that's all treated water. That leak has been found. So the usage has come way down. We okay. were up over 55,000 gallons a day. We're down to 30,000 gallon a day range. So it makes sense to budget for less. And also keeping in mind that these costs are, are only low well use costs. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm just just questioning because Sounds I was great. on the same page. So, yeah. <laughs> so you knew this going into the 2022 budget that you were paying that much for the water purification. This leak was already in place when the 2022 budget was figured. We went through an assessment in 2022 yeah. of, of our water system. And that's where they determine what, what our percentage of, of, way of loss was, et cetera. So that was done through that. So, But it wasn't done when you did the budget for 2022. Right. So did you have a leak before you did, did the budget? We, we've had leaks for the years. Okay. They're constant. Okay. Back to that volume, though. Yeah. It's off. It's up. Yeah. yeah. It's... <clears throat> the back. When Kirby, our road uh, 108, on um, page two of the budget uh, under insurance policies, there was a 187,000 or something that came in. What was that from? That was from our grader that was uh, damaged in the accident. And so we had to pay it out and recover it from the insurance company. The insurance company paid us. Okay. And then, so with that, Income from that insurance proceeds was that put against the new grader? No, it was put put for the repair. So we had to pay the repair firm. So we paid the repair firm, and the, and the insurance company paid us. Okay. So then, sorry, just jumping in page three, equipment uh, repairs and maintenance. That two hundred twenty-one thousand, which is substantially more than the budget, is that include that that repair? Yes. That was it. I'm sure it is without looking at it, but I'm sure it is. Yeah. Take what this would be that thing. Which line is that, Mr. Uh, Kirby? Uh, three, two, three, oh, three. Uh, I don't have the Do we have the financial plan there? That is what it is. Yeah. I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah. Page three, uh, It's on page three of the uh, official budget document at the near the bottom. Line three two three oh three. Yes. Definitely. Absolutely. Yes. That's, okay. Do you mind if I just continue on that page? Certainly. Sure. Okay. Um, if we go up then to uh, uh, 1320, I just notice that there's a healthy jump in the allocation for conventions. Is there a particular reason for that? Was that from last was for this year, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. This year, the convention was uh, would be twofold. It was in April and in November, and now because of COVID, it's only the one convention that was attended. And, increase. Yeah, and also because we have a lot of new counselors. Right. So. Which are eligible as well. Yeah. And on the again, same page, 25, 40 ambulance services. So the the increase the, the whatever the tripling or quadrupling of the increase for this year is that because of the change over to our new regional system of ambulance? That is the new EMR. Yeah, system. that's what I mentioned. On the slide under protective services, the EMR. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I'm sorry, when the council was first um, alerted, I guess, to the fact that the province would be changing the way that it was going to be delivering ambulance services, I mean, so a few years back, was council aware that there's going to be a substantial increase in our operating costs? No, I don't think that was ever. I mean, that comes about in 2016 when we realized that they're going to change the ambulance system. And it was always an idea that it was going to make it so that we wouldn't have to worry about ambulance services going to take over by the province and they're going to do it through their gps system that was never going to work obviously but we uh, we weren't advised of anything further 
you, uh, I'm sorry, do you anticipate continued climbing costs for us to receive that one service? Once we get once we get established, I don't think so, but uh, I mean there's still gonna be costs associated with trading and everything else that's coming down for sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm curious on page four of the budget. Now, this is the total transportation costs. And I appreciate it because somebody already mentioned that we, uh, we are going to be spending significantly less in this coming budget year than we have previous. Does this mean, <laughs> I'll ask a pointed question, does this mean that rural road repair and maintenance is going to suffer? No. <laughs> No, uh, that's uh, one of the major items that council has been working on is the three intersections on number 10 highway being our road, uh, Turkey, Ranch. Turkey Ranch and Thanks. Trees Bank. And we're looking at everything we can do as far as possible, even to the point of possibly paving those uh, at least 300 feet off of number 10 highway. But we're gonna look at all elements of that and where Councilor Forey is going to give us some direction. And, and you believe that within this budget year, you're going to be able to facilitate those repairs or those improvements? Well, that's through the gas tax. We, we can use gas tax for that, as long as it's done by an independent contractor, not by our own people. And if we do that, then we can uh, we can accomplish a little more than that. And those intersections, we, we feel is very important because of the washboard situation, and we want to get that prepared as much as possible. We're going to try this. And if it works, we'll be doing the other roads as well that's off number 10 highway and et cetera. So yeah. Gas tax money is used to improve the asset, not just maintain it. <coughs> Linda McCray Walker, 318 Um, in the recreation and culture cultural services, there's like a $500,000 increase from what you budgeted to what you actually did. Can you explain that? And that, that would be from the arena. The front page. The front page. Is that the arena? Recreation and cultural services. Last year's actual $651,000. Oh, yeah, so this is again an electric thing, but this is, there was a substantial fundraising campaign for the ice plant. Mm -hmm. So those donations flowed through and they didn't need it to be recorded as both an in and an out. So we didn't budget for those donations, uh, okay. but they still have to be recorded. But it's showing it like as an expenditure, you've got 651, not in revenue. That's good. Yeah, so there is. Sorry, you go okay, ahead. good. We get the money in, shows as a revenue, then we pay it out. Then you have to show that you pay as it an out. expense. So okay. that's out. Okay. But it shows for transparency line items on the budget. Okay. And is there money that was also given from I believe there was something came down through municipalities as well? Is there not some eighty eight thousand or eight hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars that was also provided to the Recreation, is that correct? Did I see something like, about that? Just lately, just like federal, 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 yep. yeah, the federal government just announced 832000 And that's project. going towards the Wawanisa complex, or how are we right. using that? Yeah, so is that going to help with some of this tax levies coming down a little bit if we're going to be getting money federally? Uh, no, so the, the $325,000 that the municipality um, budgeted from the, to the project which as a reminder was 250,000 uh, paid by Well Mesa and 75,000 paid by Rural. So that's an important fact we're going to remember. Um, so that that's done. And, you know, I think it's it's a really good news story, Linda, that yeah, that I'm money was I'm taken not complaining. from- I'm I'm just asking yeah. if that's what this is going to. Yeah. Now, my other, my other question towards that then is, it's great that Well Mesa paid what they did and we did what we did. Everybody contributed to it. Now, my other question is, is that naming of that complex going to change to the Oakland Wawanisa or, or the Oakland Wawanisa complex? Because I know Cirrus did that. Cirrus is, is the Glenwood, Cirrus sure. Glenwood sure. complex, and everybody paid towards that. I still make payments towards Cirrus Glenwood, and I have no problem making payments for recreation. I have no problem doing that at all. But if we're all paying to it, should it not be considered 
a municipal recreational complex. Right I know now, it says one when you said district, but yeah. we're not a district anymore. We all belong right together. Right now, council just passed a resolution this uh, about two meetings ago, was it, that, uh, for a possible renaming of the arena. Okay. And I think at that time we're going to have a full review of it as to what we're going to how we're going to name it. That would be fantastic because I do honestly believe that if it's you know for all going to be pulling together and become one, then we need to start making sure that everything is named the same. Open law when he says what it should be. Okay. So. Yeah, you just got to be a little bit careful with that, Linda, right? Because we also give money to the Nesbitt Hall. So are we going to call that the Open Law Nisa Hall and the Farrell Hall? We're going to switch the name up? Probably not, right? So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can we call it the Guild Insurance Arena? <laughs> <laughs> so. Would you would you be open to naming rights? <laughs> <laughs> That's at least $25,000 a year. So. I don't think we'll get that far. <laughs> Um, sorry, one more thing. Do we know what our final cost is for the rebuild on this? Do we have a final number? Do you have that with you there? Uh, I don't have the exact number, but it was pretty close to 600000 So a lot over what we had budgeted for? No. I thought we were at five something to begin with. The overrun that we had, uh, I think it's around 60000 uh, was for the additions that we asked for because council decided we wanted to have something added on, for instance, different windows and different insulation than what was in the engineering. So that was added on by council. It wasn't the cost overruns weren't there. In fact, I believe we got this very small portion back from the contingency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The pergola, reason for the pergola? It's, it comes from the engineer's design and the architecture that design of the building. So even though lumber was extremely expensive, we went with it anyway? Well, it, it came out, as I said, this started back in 2021. I, I understand, but we were told that there was no way we were going to do it in Nesbitt because the cost was way too high. And now we're sitting at close to what it would have been if we built in Nesbitt. So no, that's no, the only no. reason I'm asking. Of course, that's not correct. I want to make sure we do these accurately. The cost to do it in Nesbitt was in the, in the neighborhood of seven. It, it was over 600,000, but then if you would have asked for the changes because that was to make a building the same as this. Yeah. So if council had made the determination that they wanted the upgraded windows, that they wanted the upgraded insulation, that would have added to those costs as well. Right. That wasn't because this was a renovation. That was an actual request of council to improve what was planned for initially through the engineers so the original information that we were all given it has changed from what you're telling us now then because that seven hundred thousand was never ever presented to us seven hundred thousand they were presented to you in in any document has anybody ever seen the seven hundred anybody that's here right now the seven hundred which no. what no. cost of seven hundred but you right. said if we were to build in Nesbitt, it was going to cost upwards of seven hundred thousand. It was close to seven hundred thousand. But that was off. never given to it any of us. It was given out the very start of this whole program of doing the rebuild. The, the cost, else? the cost no. was said though for yeah. both options, Linda, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. I'm going from memory. You know, of course, this is not a 2023 budget issue, but I am going from memory, and I think it was about wasn't it about a hundred thousand dollars more to build in. That's for yeah. That's so that takes your 500 from Moisa to 600. Then the additions that were requested, right, which would have needed to be added. So but that's it's still, that we still didn't have 700 first initially told to us for Nesbitt. No, because no, those, those additions. That's, that's what I'm saying. We have never planned. seen in printing. Seven but everybody was given, everybody in the municipality was given it, that information through through the budget process as to what the cost was going to be here and in Nesbitt. The additions were added on afterwards, which was a budget, budget item but brought up through council and, or, and the resolution was passed through council. So that's council. That's not us seeing what you did. We didn't get to see that's, that. That's right. We have to make some of those decisions. So all I'm saying is that what you ended up spending on this building was a lot more than what we have originally were told was going to be spent and it's close to what it would have been for no, Nesbitt, no. when when we first saw the numbers. No, not even at that point. All right, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you. No, that's fine. 
Mr. Kirby. Actually, to uh, to a point that was kind of raised there, um, I wonder is council considering for next budget cycle um, having open meetings with public in the council? If public are invited to every every council meeting we have. Uh, but then you go in camera for certain things. They are in camera sessions, that's right. So in Brandon, so they'll do. To their, my point, uh, yeah. are you considering having open budget discussions? We haven't discussed it. I can say that. Um, just another question, and I, and I want to be clear on this. I, and I think this was already addressed, but I, again, I want to be clear on the page. It was page one of the budget. It's the net operating surplus to deficit, and we've had a 170,000 some deficit for this current right. cycle. And that was caused by? Caused by use of gas tax to pay for this building portion. And we had we were advised by the, the provincial government that it was not allowable when we submitted it. So it came back. We put that money back into gas tax, using gas tax in this budget to offset that. Okay, good. So, and then just one last thing. Um, in, so we're moving ahead with the Probably most council decides otherwise, a uh, middle rate of 9.860. Um, now, by contrast, in 2016, a few years ago, but still recent, 2016, Urban, because we didn't have a permanent tax at that point, Urban had a rate of 8.45%, or 8.45 miles, and the rural was 4.771. So in the, that time frame, seven years, the rural mill rate has doubled, and the uh, gas station rate, well, Lisa has really stayed almost the same. I would like to hear from a rural council or two on whether they believe that we are being well served. Comparing apples to oranges there, but at the same time, I'll let if the councillors want to speak, all that they can speak to it. But it's you're comparing 2016 compared to 2023, the seven year difference. I don't know what was included in that bill rate, you'd have to go back and see. We're not discussing that at this point as far as this public hearing goes. This is for this financial plan, but I think if they, can, if they wish to comment, they can. Uh, we have the fire service included at that time. And again, we'd have to go back. You we're guessing I mean, from the seven years down the road. I'm not sure what that was. Um, there was a lot of changes made in amalgamation. There's no doubt about it. Was there a reduction in, in the taxation in, in certain areas because of this is Long Lisa? Uh, yes, there's a reduction of, of some taxation there. And I don't know about increasing the rural as much as it was just kind of carryover. Uh, so at the same time, there's been a real difference in, it, in assessed values over this time period. The assessed value in farmland has basically more than doubled since 2016. There's a lot of factors that move into that, not just necessarily the cost. I'm just asking whether that was still a railway or we're not. Money There's railway really money of 120,000 per year that was in there for just directly to rural expenses. I mean, there's, let's say, it's apples to oranges at this point, so it, it, it's very difficult to say what that, that uh, the difference is there. Remembering that we are going forward with amalgamation, that hasn't changed, so we have to do our budget accordingly. Well, sorry, but respectfully, the difference is pretty clear. The rural mill rate is double <laughs> where the, 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 the rate charged the wall Lisa repairs is essentially stagnated. Well, I think Mr. Kirby, you had uh, you had something came up a couple of years ago where you had your, your uh, assessed value contested. Did that go down? Like you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm just asking the question. Could you, you, that's part of the problem if you get into this discussion of taxation. If, you're, if your assessment goes down and farmland goes up, that farmland pays, pays with you. So is that tax difference? And I'm not sure what your argument is because while the Rural taxation rate has doubled. The price of farmland has also gone up exponentially. So what you're doing is you're getting more money on top of more money. That's Whereas right. in Wallonista, what are you saying? The price of housing in Wallonista has what? Not changed over the last seven. It hasn't years? changed much. I can tell you that. Okay. So what you're doing then is you're getting more money from rural 
at a time when all of these not really contributed much more to the global pie. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think you again, you can't compare it in that basis. You can't go, uh, if you want to go by tax notice to tax notice, if you want to compare yours to mine, sort of thing, I can show you that. We can go through all those kind of scenarios, but it's not going to solve uh, what we're trying to get through with this public hearing today. And this is just the, the budget of this year, 2023. The budget is there. The, the, the uh, council has rolled up their sleeves and done the best they can do as far as their costs associated with uh, revenue. And uh, that's what we're putting forward. Okay, so on that note, uh, the 2023 budget, what percentage of total taxes are rural paying compared to urban? Very difficult to determine. Very well, difficult because you have special levies that are, are done yeah, on a per parcel basis. Everything is included. You, somebody should have that number. Somebody well, should it, have it, an idea of the percentage that rural pays of the total taxes, including the levies, because we pay levies too, and what urban pays. At one point, it's 14 and 86. How much has that changed? 86, 14 is just the difference in assessed value. No, so that's no, what the no, difference no, is. no. I remember exactly, we were in the Wallanisa ring. No, we weren't in Wallanisa ring. We were in Nesbitt, and I asked that question, and it was for, the answer was, at the time, 14 percent was paid by Wallanisa, 86 by rural, and that was confirmed. I remember that. Well, 86.14, again, I'll go through that, is the difference that is the 86 percent of the assessed value that comes from the rural. No, it, was, 14. it was taxed. It was the taxes collected right. at the time. I specifically remember that. With was that? That was in Nesbitt, one of the budget meetings we were in Nesbitt, and I specifically asked the question as to how much taxes does Wallanisa pay and how much taxes does rural pay and so well, Anissa yeah. contributed 14 percent four years ago five years ago we were in that neighborhood and yes before we had any special levies uh there was maybe one i'm not even sure at the time around the time you talk i talk about this water treatment plant that nobody wants The, again, going, going through this budget this time, if you take a look at the example of the recreation levy, and I think I sent that to Ms. Mary Walker, uh, that last election I sent her a copy of the bylaw that shows, and the bylaws are individual, mm -hmm. and that bylaw says what's up, what is paid by rural, what's paid by... Yes, yeah, so, I'm just So that's not, that's not, if you say, no, I'm just trying to explain this. We do each separate one. Special levy there was about 50-50. Oh, I know. Yeah. So then you get special levy on the garbage situation. That is again a split. Yeah. Now, how what exactly that is, I don't. I can't tell you. Yeah. So once you you calculate it out, that's how you can determine what's what's rural and what's. Yes. Yeah. And we I, don't have that. I know how to. We don't have that handy here. We can get that number to you. Okay. That would be good. But it'd be it be a calculation, and they can they can show it. Okay. I'd like to see that. See if I could figure out how to, because there's a lot of, a oh, lot I'm, of numbers. I'm sure there is. Even if you got the 2022 numbers, everything collected rural, everything collected urban, and then go from there. You should be able. To, it should be, yeah, easy to do. Sure, and and I mean you can use the number in any way, any fashion you wish. No, it should be plain and. I don't know in it should be on your tax program whether you can differentiate by roll number to do a calculation. To try and do it off the assessment roll would be very difficult because it's by class as well as by roll number. But I don't know in the Unisoft program if you can separate it out to do taxes just by roll number to only have the not to break it down. The only thing I can think of is if we know that roll, all these roll numbers are well, these are rolls. <laughs> we'll get the calculator out and add them all up, and then do the same for the roll. Well, we for would the know total. Our, yeah, we would know what our budget was, so that if we could calculate just what all the 200 roll numbers are, the difference would be what the rural is. Yeah. So it might be addition of 
if, if there's no way to do it in the program, it would be adding 500 or however many, how, however many roll numbers there are in the and so it's subtracting it off the total. You have, you have rural, you have urban, you have other. Not all over the world. So yeah, mm -hmm. great. Well, if I'm at yeah. hearing the question, what they want to know is how much specifically did Wabanisa pay versus how much did rural pay? So that wouldn't tell you farm versus residential or mm -hmm. farm yeah. versus pipeline versus railway. No. That would just be how much do rural pay and versus how much do rural pay. I don't know what value there is in calculating that, but. That's the only way that I can think of yeah, easily too. to do it because I don't think it could be done off the assessment <laughs> spreadsheets. No, and it would be a manual calculation. Yeah, so it would. I have a request. Can we have the Nesbitt office opened as a satellite office to pay taxes at? That Nesbitt office is not functional. Mm, not at all, why? It's uh, actually right now it's rodent infested and it's got it's got uh, the insulation issue that, that's in there, the asbestos. Which is in the attic. It's in the attic, so the mice has grown this so the didn't, attic. We didn't do anything to control anything. We just said we're done with it. We're lock the door. We're done with it, so it doesn't matter anymore. Basically. It, it, it I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just asking because this was a satellite office for a while, and so it would be nice to have that one as a satellite just for paying taxes, which I know other municipalities do have. You have an option to go to a satellite office. So I just thought it might be nice for some of our elderly people who maybe don't like to pay it through the mail or can't do it online, would like to be able to get to the Nesbit office rather than coming all the way here. But that's just a, it's just a suggestion. But if it's not, well, that's fine. Can you use the Nesbit home instead? No, not at this point, no. Council has not decided anything. Oh, so and you would have to have access to our programs. So you'd have to have the internet connection. The, the, there's no well, internet yeah, access. Accessibility issues. Need, there are all yeah. kinds of issues that are in there. That's one of the reasons why we decided to change as a council to get into a proper building that we can have those those, those issues dealt with. Council hasn't discussed that at all. Lois Hunter on um, 35819. So Heather Stephenson on February 24th announced that they were giving 47 million to all the municipalities in 2023. What is Oakland Wallace's portion of this and where is it included in the budget? So do you like to talk about that or, or the name? Because we have got the number now, do we not? We've got an estimated number. Preliminary. So what happens is that when we sent this uh, our information out on the internet on, on the website as for this public hearing, that can't be changed until the second reading of this of the bylaw. We can't just start throwing money in or pulling money out after we've advised people on the website of this this document. That document is there. When we get this money in, and we know the exact amount at that time, council can make a decision whether to put it in general reserve. If you use next year's taxation or to make another area to, to use it this year, whatever the case may be. But approximately? Approximately $95,000. Is what they're getting. And so what council will be asked at the time that they consider second reading of the bylaw is if they are prepared to do an amendment, you cannot increase the amount of taxes without doing another public hearing. You can keep it the same or you can decrease it. What council will be asked at that point is, uh, if we're adding the $95,000 in as revenue, where would you like to see it go? Is it um, a reduction? Is it additional funds going into reserve? Are part of it going into operating? That will have to be a council decision at the time that we're getting second meeting. And what is the exact tax increase for this year? What percentage is it? 4.4. And does that include the deficit from last year? Yes, or is yes. that on top of it? That includes everything. And that 90,000 is not the total amount. That's the extra that she was yeah, talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would hope that council would put that against and reduce our tax bill somewhat, or at least reduce some of the deficit with it. 
instead of spending more money somewhere. Would be my recommendation. Uh, Mr. Rome, you had a question? What's that? Yes, it seems, it seems to me, if I remember the numbers correctly, that uh, the increase in taxes was to bring in an additional $90,000. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Is that right? Sorry, I didn't quite catch The that. increase in taxes was to bring in an additional $90,000. Is that on that presentation? Yes. Yes. That would be pretty close. Nine thousand change. I don't have that on here. Okay. Well, correct. We'll take a look at it. Uh, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty close. Yes. yes. So I mean that <laughs> presentation and, and just as, as Lois just mentioned. Uh, and as the CAO has just confirmed, there will be approximately $95,000 out of that basket funding that will come to the RM. So if council looks at that and acts accordingly, that should negate the tax, the tax increase. Council will take that under review. That would be the responsible thing to do. Yeah. Well, I had a couple of other questions while I've while I got your attention here. Uh, page three, uh, budgeted in 2022 on, on the fuel cost, 32 uh, Budget was 67.5, and yet the actual dollar spent was almost 120,000. Lynn, could you elaborate on that? Fuel costs have gone through the roof. Oh, we do. Uh, yeah. what, that's. We don't buy fuel. We don't spend it. You don't get it then. Not, not, not in a one year span. Anyhow, yeah. you know, just, just an observation, yeah. just you something that jumps on the page. They've been pricing between two couple of different companies. Oh, yeah, but you didn't run any of your in the winter. And for that two months. In the winter, our graders hardly ran. We had custom Yeah, there's, there's, there's something else in that category. How did it mean anything else under fuel? Take a look at the fuel. What, what is that? That is the fuel. Fuel would be fuel. So it was, what was budgeted? 67. 67, yeah. And our fuel costs are doubled from the time we uh, budgeted until we were actually over using it. Yeah, we, we had the one grader we, we leased. I know that was. Uh, you you would have looked at the, the end figure for 2021. To develop a, a figure for 2022, and you would have adjusted that based on additional fuel costs as far as increases, because we've had increases going back five, six years now, and they've been substantial. But they don't, they do not equate to the difference in the fuel costs we're seeing here. Don't equate to uh, what fuel costs have changed. Yeah, well, and we remember we went through the with the COVID thing, and then came in 2021. We did have an increase of in the fuel tax or the fuel cost skyrocketed at that point. They have come down now, but I mean, those, those are those are actual numbers. Yeah, we're talking 2000. Yeah. So, so that's that when the graders were out doing the major snow. That's the year the graders were out of commission. Sorry, you used yes, you know, just to me, that's a huge discrepancy. Yeah. What we did though, also there is that we, we uh, distributed gravel with our own vehicle at that time. So we reduced our gravel hauling cost. Well, at, in, in that same period, because we're using our own, we have the semi-trailer truck. So you also had that semi tractor in 2021, did you not? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think we use it as much so. We did in 2022. We had we had the we had the piece of tractor longer. But anyway, it, it's actual cost. Those are actual costs. Okay. Our cost is So when you go down just below that line, three two three eleven. Later cost. Budget at hundred thousand. 
That was when we had our graders out. We had to get first uh, private companies to start doing that work. That's usually recorded under custom when we do a budget, not under way. Not, not necessarily. That would that come under that budget item. We'd have to put it under a budget item we have already put into the budget. We don't we can't put a new a different budget item in there after the fact. We'd have to use what we have on record. That's part of transportation. So then under rentals, would that not have been what you did with your grading? There's a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar charge there for rentals. So right. Would that not have been your custom operator? No, nope, that'd be the greater uh, that we leave and also probably the traffic the traffic I mean, yeah. Okay, so again, this is a budget item, uh, right. and it's an ongoing budget item every year. Uh, none necessarily. What? Well, well, just a minute. This one is, if I can finish here, um, the rental of a semi tractor to pull a gravel trailer. On an annual basis, that tractor is costing us 30 grand for the four or five months. Is that accurate? Did, did I see that right in the, probably the accurate? In the budget line? Okay. That's probably accurate. 30? So the question. It begs the question, why did we give away $30,000 a year starting back in 2020 or 2021? And in three years, you've paid for almost a, almost a new tractor back in those days. Yeah, that's when you were on today. council, when you were on council, the Mack truck, this could, this RM was dumping 20 grand a year into that tandem truck. Okay, so this, truck. this is a different issue, right? No, it's, it's a truck. No, this is a different issue. We dealt with that semi issue back then too, and council at the time said, "No, this does not make sense because we have to take a uh, an operator off of a grader and put them on there, take them away from a function that was probably more important." Anyhow, the tandem truck we've already dealt with. We bought a unit one here, so now we have that truck plus the lease one. My question is simply, what is the rationale behind spending thirty thousand dollars a year? That just goes out on a lease payment when in the three year period you would actually own that truck. And you, I'm, you not go, you should, go, I'm not saying you should, should own one because I think it's just a little bit ridiculous when we hire a custom guy. But what's the rationale behind that? That does, to me doesn't make very much business sense. To cut back on the maintenance costs, we don't have anybody to pull ranches. And uh, if the motor grenades in that truck. Bill, Bill Maledger, he, he's a truck driver his whole life. He can tell you what the cost could be if that thing wrecks. Oh, you also don't have to go out and buy a brand new truck, though, either. We don't. Well, but if, but if we buy, if if we buy a $15,000 car, buy a truck straight, you know, you just go on top of it, you can pick them up for fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 You can pick them up cheaper than what you can buy your one ton for. Yep. And as long as they're, they're checked over, like those things will hold for years. In the previous guys on council too, we've discussed this uh, truck, whether we should buy one or lease one. And at the time we made the determination to lease one. Yeah, I, that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. But do you, do you really think that makes good business sense? Is it an annual thing or are you locked into a contract a long-term contract? It's just it's an, an annual. An annual. Like, like you're talking like Dave, you're trying to compare apples to oranges. How many miles are you going to put on that truck in the municipality? The yeah. municipality is only 18 by 18. Our, our truck actually hauled half as much as uh, Gilbert, the contractor, hauled. Well, then why did you pay for it $110,000? Well, it goes into different different categories or between crushing and hauling. Well, I don't know, but there was inside the paper that you guys paid Gilbert got $110,000 yeah. So I don't know what he does. Could, could I make a sorry a suggestion with the fuel cost, uh, just so transparency is out in the open? Would we be able to do a system where we know having log books in every single municipal vehicle and you knowing what you're filling up and at what time? So then we can actually get a cost of each piece of equipment. Oh, what meters at the, on the pumps at the... But I'm just saying specifically, like, say, Greater 1 had this much fuel at this state, Greater 2 this much, and then there's... Well, some counts have been like that. Yeah. yeah. Whether that's there or not, we can look at that as far as... Are the tanks in the not metered now? Pardon me? Are the tanks in the not metered? Yeah, so it's pretty easy to do? 
Well, we don't want him to pay rent too. But I mean, it's, it's, uh, he, uh, Councilor Jones is talking about putting it so that every we know how much we're going to get. Any other business puts a, a number on each unit, and then they record to that that unit. And that council will look at that. Mm -hmm. Same by same token, I think. I mean, if I'm hearing Dennis, I mean. We certainly need to look at the feasibility of renting versus leasing again. You know, owning versus leasing again. And I think we can. Um, our public works manager was actually raising concerns about that too, asked the same question. And I think it's on the table. We can certainly mm -hmm. do it again. And if it makes financial sense to keep leasing, then we can we can do that. And if it makes financial sense to purchase one, whether it's a used one or a new one or whatever the case may be, we have to manage the risk. Try and offset it. I mean, we don't want to go buy a used one and then come back with a fifty thousand dollar repair cost in a year. But then it'll be pretty stupid. Or does it just make sense? Well, mm -hmm. Sell the trailer right, 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 right. an experiment. Like, and let the, con the guys that specialize in hauling gravel, haul gravel, and us use the tandem for the spot drops that we always have done. The problem, there's some big issues with that. I mean, it goes back to who can do it, when they can do it, and all that kind of thing. So we get we have a bigger issue it. with licensing for the semi tractor where we have to have a class one, where with the, with the tandem, you only need class three. So it's a lot easier to staff that tandem than it is to staff it. And the only guy that I'm aware of, unless our new public works manager has a class one there, is our our uh, best operator on a on a grader. Yeah. Taking him off a grader when our roads need attention again doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if he's hauling gravel for those roads, that's pretty important too. Somebody's got to prepare the roads for that gravel. I mean, it's a chicken and egg thing. I mean, no, it really isn't. Well, You've got to prepare the road to be able to put the gravel. Council on. will take that under advice. On the discussion about putting the pavement down on top of these roads, all you have to do is look at. Where you come onto the road going out here to Shiloh. The government done it on the PR coming across there. So why aren't you talking to them to find out instead of going out and spending money on doing whatever you're going to do? I have to buy a drove across it tonight. <laughs> I have intimate knowledge of that project. We will look into that. Well, well but uh, that's all you have to do. I don't know why you have to do a study on top of it. The government's already paid that little piece there. I don't know how it's working out. But who's doing somebody's it? got to make it too. Who's there, going to do that? There's been no indication of study. Well, you said you were looking into it. In looking here. into it, yes. We're in three years well, what, are you, what, are you, what does that mean? No, sir, four is going to give that us means, give us That means I will use all the knowledge that I have and experience that I have. I'm not saying I know everything, and I'll leave it to the best of my ability. Bring it to council and say these are our options. This is the life cycle that we can expect of option one. So the in, internal rate of return on the cost of that will be X. We look at the life cycle cost of option two, what the internal rate of return on that is, and they will make an informed and scientific decision on what the best option is to pursue. Because like even Cornwall to try pavement, it doesn't Yeah, work. they use steak with it, and it looks a great bit. Well, they got to lot of it up, and now they put down whatever they do with it. Put down the calcium and clay and whatever else to try to make a road over there. I serve I serve on the transportation decision at Canada Small Municipalities Committee. I, I get all the first hand knowledge of all the small municipalities across Canada, what they try and what works and what doesn't work, and I promise you we'll do the best we can for our municipality. We recognize that there is a challenge. We definitely want to fix it. And if I contribute nothing else. Then maybe I can try and help improve that situation, but we will look into it and we will make a smart decision. We can, we can bet on it. Because I don't know it's going to be cheap putting down the table. No, and I don't know what it is. Pretty much not necessarily the option. This is already the street and bar machine. Maybe put down the table. Payment's one of your options. If you look at if you look at any project alternatives, you have added all your options. Think nothing is open, also an option. But that's the one as well. All you have to do is have the greater go to maintain the road. I, where I live, we very seldom see the grader. You can think whatever you want. Somebody tell Craig that they're out, but they don't go down our road because the plow was down and he graded all the gravel up into the middle of the road in the fall. The snow came and nobody came to push it off. Craig said that somebody told him that they'd been through all the roads, but they hadn't. Because the next time they came along and cleaned off the road, well, they leveled off that ridge in the middle of the road. So. 
I know some of your operators don't even know where that road is. They go where all the roads are. No, you don't. <laughs> Talk to Darcy. That's he had the man come up there with his tractor and his snow blower the one night and he went a quarter of a mile up the road to the bank in the road. He decided that was the end of the road and took off and went to the island. I sat there and watched him. Darcy had to send the maintainer up the next morning to plow through. So I don't think he knows where the road is. Mr. Council is uh, always looking for ways to collect taxes. I'm just wondering if, are we one of the only municipalities that doesn't assess business tax? Doesn't assess business tax? No, not the only one, but there's, there's, there are municipalities in charge. Has that been something that's been discussed with David? Yeah, that hasn't been discussed at Council. I think it's actually quite rare, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Brandon, I don't think so. Yes, okay. no. When I do a craft sale, I have to pay this. Yeah. Yeah. But every craft sale I go to. That's a well, that's what you that's well, you see in itself that a tax based on your in not yeah. having a business tax. Pardon me? What well, you see in itself was unique in not having a business tax. When we joined Oakland, Oakland had a business tax and well, you did not. Yes. Brandon yeah. doesn't have one, Dennis. So Pardon me? Brandon doesn't have one. Well, I think most of school that is Yeah, well, I, I think I've got a pretty good idea. Yeah. There's no business tax. There, there's there's permits and things that you need to operate as a trade person and, you know, a sales person, but there's no business There is no business tax. Thank you. Mr. Rowe? Yes, Mr. Rowe. Yes. I just have um, just a quick question. I'm kind of a check and balance kind of gal. So when we look at the check and balances for the gas tax on all of that, but do we have municipal tax funds that run around? I can't understand you. Yeah. Do we have municipal trucks that drive around like half ton, three we quarter have, ton? We have uh, two trucks, yeah. Okay, do they go home with the person at night or do they return to the corral? They return. Now, when they fill up with gas, is the receipt submitted or do they go in this tank that's not really metered? I would think they'd be getting from our tanks. Well, no, that's diesel, so they wouldn't be able to get gas. They would get is there gas there? The only reason I mention it is because we do have the carbon tax that's coming April 1st, is the projected date. Fuel taxes are going to go up high. The cost of fuel will go high. I think to have the checks and balances in place would be very beneficial if we had the next tax year. That's my only comment. Anything for Okay, we're all whereas all representatives in regard to the 2023 financial plan were dealt with, therefore be resolved that public hearing be concluded and counts to resume its normal order of business. Move that. Councilor Corey, second to Councilor All in favor? Okay, be it resolved that the 2023 financial plan of municipality of Oakland Wild Issa is set out in the, in the form proof, approved by the Minister of Municipal Relations be adopted. And further, that the operating and capital estimates outlined in said plan be incorporated in and form part of the 2023 tax levy bylaw. Move that. Councillor Hatch, seconder. Councillor Fisher. All in favor? Okay. Um, bylaw number 35 2023. The tax, the 2023 tax levy bylaw. First reading, be it resolved that the bylaw number 35 2023 in the 2023 tax levy bylaw be ready first time. Can you please move that? Councillor McGone, seconder. Councillor Fisher, there's no discussion on our first reading. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Be it resolved that the meeting does now adjourn. Please move it. Councillor Gregor, seconder. Councillor Hatch, all in favor? 